I'll just um, give this a, a moment because I feel like lately YouTube has had a lag. So I want to make sure that everyone can hear me and um, that you guys don't miss out on anything that I'm about to say because I got some, I got a big reminder. But hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. Okay. Hi everyone. I see you guys were um, having conversations here already, which is so awesome. Glad that you guys are here to join us. <clears throat> so hey everyone, it's Tiana from the Maniology team here with our weekly live. Every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, you can find us here on another nail stamping journey. Whether it's a tutorial, technique, or hack, we're here to discuss the details, and I'm so happy you could join. And um, if you enjoy our videos and the content that we share, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our Maniology Lives or any of the awesome nail art content that you enjoy here. So. Big, big, huge reminder, we are in the last week of our Santa's Workshop giveaway. So I wanted to make sure that all of you had uh, the opportunity to put your entries in. We are giving away 100 of these Santa Workshop um, starter boxes. This box is so fun. It comes with everything you need to start nail stamping. It comes with a plate uh, that is holiday themed, cover to cover has some full nail designs, individual designs, or some really cute stuff. Comes with two mini stamping polishes and a holiday themed stamper and scraper. Don't miss out, the giveaway ends on November 18th, which is this Friday. Um, so we don't want you guys to miss out. We're already sitting at about uh, 15, 15,000 entries. Isn't that nutty? Um, I, yeah, mind blown. So I wanted to make sure that everyone has had a chance to enter. Like I said, we've had a ton of you enter. I'm so surprised. And um, yeah, the link is in the description. Go ahead. Uh, the details are in the giveaway. And this giveaway is open to select international locations, which is also listed in the details. So just go ahead. Click the link that I have provided in the description and go enter to win and good luck. Yay. Okay, so I don't know if any of you remember, about a few weeks ago, a question was posed in the community section. So if you're not aware of the community section, it's kind of like a comment, what's going on, um, sneak peek, anyway, a talk story section of YouTube, which if you didn't know, now you know, and that's why you should be subscribed to us because we post in there. But anyway, we asked about what you thought of our new pictures. I got my iPad here, so let me just go find, oh, look at that, so simple. So here is our website and stuff, but if you haven't noticed, let me just go to the new area that now for our nail stamping plates, we're presenting our pictures in a way that gives, you know, um, customers or even people who have the plate who purchase from us, I mean, who would also be customers, duh, T. Um, inspiration and a jump start on your creativity by, you know, showing you different ideas that you can do with the plate. Now, um, oh yeah, look, we got some Winnie the Pooh plates that just dropped. Got some really, really cool stuff. Oh, look, Santa's workshop right there. So you'll notice that, especially for our individual um, images, I'm sorry, individual stamping plates, we'll present the images in such a way that allows you to kind of see um, some ideas. So many, I want to say maybe about 90% of you all in the community said that you guys really, really like this new idea and then also wanted to see how to create um, the nail art. So I thought, hey, why don't I just do that?
for you guys. This is the season right now. I'm trying to look for the plate that we're gonna use today, 174. So I was like, what the hey? It's a holiday season, we're already in it. People are asking for inspiration. Why not do this design? So that is what I am going to do with you guys today. So I hope you guys are interested. Um, fun fact, actually, if you are a, if you've been riding with Maniology before in the days of Bundle Monster, then you would know that actually this is a plate um, design that we had back in the day <laughs> when we were a Bundle Monster. And this was something that we kind of recreated into our signature rectangular plate. So um, basically what I'm trying to say is if you are with us, you might erect already have this plate. And I had to do some digging to find out which plate it was. So before we used to have square plates. And um, so actually this is featuring two plates on one plate. But they were like, I wish I had some. I, I don't have them here, but they were like um, maybe two inch by two inch square plates with the rounded um, edges. And uh, this was one plate and this was one plate. So this one, I believe, was BMS214. And this one was BMS220. So if you have any of those square plates, they definitely still work. Go ahead and bust them out. If not, now we've condensed it into one plate. And this is plate M174. Just a little fun fact. So let's just jump right in. We have a lot of reverse stamping to do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this plate, tear off this blue film. Carefully. <laughs> I have this uh, Taylor Swift song that's like playing everywhere on TikTok. And by the way, if you guys weren't aware, did you know that we're on TikTok? Did you know that Maniology is on TikTok? Yeah, we're. Um, Keeping up over here with social media. Um, I think TikTok is definitely probably my favorite social media. It's just a whole bunch of funny, relatable stuff. So anyway, go over there. I have that Taylor Swift song stuck in my head. The it's me, hi, I'm the problem. I don't know. I was just thinking about that song. Um, but yeah, go check us out on TikTok. Okay, so here's our plate. I am loaded with all my stampers today um, and the color selection. I just looked at the image and I'm actually gonna keep the, my iPad here just so I have it in front of me. Um, Cause we're gonna recreate this. <laughs> this is my, this is how basically I kind of match the colors today. <laughs> so I have Cherry Bomb here. These are all cream colors that I'm using today. So we got Cherry Brom, Cherry Bomb, <laughs> Cherry Brom. There I go making up my own words again. Russell. I have Translan. Latte. and I'll be using Skin Deep, as well as our signature, whoa! <laughs> our signature straight up black. Okay, all of these are stamping polishes, and I love the fact that even though it looks like a very colorful image, actually, it, it, there's not a lot of colors in here, which is super cool. Sometimes, you know, with the reverse stamping, we get a little carried away 
with um, all the colors, or at least I do. Okay, so I think the approach I'm gonna do today, I've already painted the base for all of the, the nails. So I have here the base um, using Skin Deep. I have Russell and Transan here. And I just painted the nail hole. And now I'll just have to paint by numbers or polish by numbers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up all of the designs and then we'll go ahead and um, color them in. Oh, well thank you so much for those who are brand new who have never heard of Bundle Monster before. I'd love to um, give a little story time. <laughs> so Bundle Monster was actually our company before we rebranded into Maniology. Um, that's just kind of like our history. And um, we've now been maniology for four years, I wanna say. Gosh, four years, wow. I'm just over here talking with you guys and just making sure all my stampers are G for stamping, that there's no debris or anything on it. And, um, Manny, I'm sorry, Bundle Monster, when we started out, was a company that, we did nail stamping plates. <laughs> Back in the day, we had circle stamping plates and they were very sharp. Our first set did not have a paper backing. So if any of you have been with us for that long, you probably remember that, um, or if you can imagine, that it was just the metal plate with no protective backing. If you ever wondered why we put on this plastic, it's so you don't get cut. You can imagine that just the metal here is super, super sharp if there was nothing to kind of um, set it on. So this kind of helps to dull the metal part. Um, also it adds um, strength to the metal so it doesn't bend as easy. But um, quickly we learned uh, through customer service that people needed um, some kind of protection. So we ended up putting up a paper backing and um, from these small circle plates, which maybe they were about two inches like across, um, we went to square plates and then we started thinking about um, rebranding. But I think I'm jumping ahead of myself. As a company, Bundle Monster, we sold all kinds of things, electronic um, products, beauty products, makeup brushes. Um, we had even some really nice makeup um, pigments, all kinds of stuff. We had a select group of stamping polishes as well, but we've, we've grown so much since then. And we have created, you know, I, I guess, Kind of the following to the nail stamping and the nail art was we just built a very strong community on Facebook that really loved the art that we were putting out and the concept and everything. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of a little history, maniology history 101 there. Oh my goodness. Am I gonna have to unlock my iPad every single time, that's gonna really suck. <laughs> okay, so the first image is says for Santa. So I should probably pick up this section over here. You know, normally I come in with a game plan. I have no game plan. That is very unlike T. Um, don't have a game plan, so we're just gonna wing it today, and you guys, we're just gonna do nails. So all of the images that I'm picking up here is gonna be using the straight up black. Okay. Oh, it looks like it might be a little higher. We'll see what I pick up here. Okay, so 
So that's my pickup. And I know I have to do some isolating. Let's just kind of go right there. Besides, I won't have a nail big enough to fit all of the, the imagery, but just kind of leave it right there. So there's one. The next image I have to pick up are Christmas lights, which looks like it's this section here. So I probably should clean this off. Just going in with some acetone. Go back in with the black. Okay. I think I see some fuzzies. Ugh. No fuzzies, please, no fuzzies. Okay. So there's pickup number two. Uh, what does the image look like? Okay, I gotta kind of think about this. Maybe isolate this image right here. Okay, I think we're taking out that part. Should be about right, okay. And next, I see mittens. So, if you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm following this as a guide here. So, next, I'm looking for the mittens, which looks like it's this right here. There's so much to pick up. I'm sure like if you're a new stamper, you're looking at this, it's like, oh, why, is, why so much imagery? But the way that I'm using it now is actually exactly how the plate is supposed to perhaps be used. You just kind of pick up what you want and you know take off what you don't. So it kind of stops around and around here, okay. This also means I have less to color. Yay! I mean, not much less, no. So if you ever wondered why you need more than one stamper, this is the reason why. <laughs> okay, next I have Snowman. So I gotta pick up there, which looks like around here, okay. I see a little bit of black polish kind of overlapping the area, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna try. Hmm. Guess I should get my stamper ready. Okay, that looks good. Oh, that's a nice clean pickup. Okay, and last pickup. Let's see. So I see like flowers or what looks like poinsettias and I think that might be this area here, okay? Let's see. Ready? Got my clean stamper head and let's pick up that area there. And there 
There we go. Kind of off-centered, but I think she should work. Okay. So there. We'll go ahead and clean this off after. Now I don't even need this plate. Next, it's all coloring. Okay. So I have my double-ended stepper, and I'm going to go ahead and use that as my, um, what do you call, palette. And let's see. I think I saw someone say something about a plaid. Loving to see a tutorial on the plaid designs. Don't worry, we have something coming. Yes. We've seen questions for that plaid plate. And actually there's so much you can do on that plate. plate. So, all right, let's just go in with the red. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pick a detail brush. Where are you, detail brush? Um, hmm. I guess this one will do. handy dandy detail brush yeah put it in the comments if there's a tutor a specific tutorial or like a plate you'd like to see because if you guys really enjoy this segment or this stamp with uh manicure with me segment i don't know i was trying to think of a, a really catchy name let me know in the comments if you guys have a catchy name but i was thinking like uh a manicure with me which is basically what this is and I feel so lost right now. I really shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> Normally, like I said, I come in with a, a game plan, but would this be better for me to go in? What do you guys think? Better? Okay. So it looks like there is a, oh man. Shut off on me. Don't shut off on me, please. Got red stocking. So I'm gonna go ahead, my cherry bomb, which is this gorgeous cream red. Let's start coloring here. I think the plan of attack, I was thinking, oh gosh, should I do? all the pieces in red, but you know what? I probably won't make it that easy for myself. Maybe I should just work on one image at a time so it doesn't get that confusing. And then that way you know exactly which design I'm on. I'll tell you this plate, the line work on these plates, they're thicker makes reverse stamping so much easier. You know, when you have fine line designs and you're trying to do reverse stamping, oh, the pits, the pits. Hmm, let's see. Mm. Does that work? You know, I love this light, but what I don't enjoy is that ring. Not that you guys want to hear me complain. Yeah, maybe without the ring. The thing annoys me. <laughs> it's like I want you guys to see clearer, but I feel like it's not making it that much clearer. Let me know if you guys think otherwise light on or off. Okay. So there you go. That's what the stocking looks like. I'll go ahead and clean this. So I have my acetone here. I'm just going to pump clean in the same direction I'm just pulling back I want my bristles all facing the same direction I'm not swirling or going back and forth ok 
cute name, Chili Bean. Um, you know, if your hand isn't steady, <laughs> thick designs like this to reverse stamp is perfect. Um, let's see. Got some cookies to actually cookies and I should go in with trance then. Don't worry if you're late, we'll, we'll be here for a little bit. <laughs> I am taking a design that we have on our website with um, you know, now we're showcasing design ideas that you can do with the nail stamping plate. And many people have been asking, oh, what color are they using? That's such a cool idea, but I can't do it. Um, you know, can you name me the polishes that are used? The design was actually, you know, brought, I, I guess kind of came together because it was more of inspiration, not necessarily using our nail stamping um polishes but that's not to say that i couldn't find nail stamping polishes to fit which i i'm doing in this live today so if you have any curiosity as to which design i'm doing this is the one from plate m174 and that's the design we're doing today Okay, so now I'm gonna put some latte on here and I'm gonna color in the cookies. And it's so funny because these cookies look like cookies my son ate, because they're all bitten and not eaten completely. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, why, why are you doing that? Who am I kidding? Not sometimes, all the time. I have a rando question. So at one point, maybe, well, I don't know, I don't have a concept of when, but there was a meme that was floating around at one point that was like, if you bite into your ice cream, you are psycho. Then I realized that I bite into my ice cream. And my husband called me a psycho. And I realized last night I was giving my son ice cream that he bites into his ice cream. So the question is, do you bite into your ice cream? I always thought I had sensitive teeth, but I guess maybe not as sensitive as I thought. Okay, I'm trying to get close to some of these areas. You can see some areas where it's still white. <laughs> I bite into my ice cream and I'm a little crazy. I love that. See, I have sensitive teeth too, and I still bite as well, so seems like it's more commonplace than we think. So far, that's what it looks like. I bite it only if it's in a cone half cycle. <laughs> okay, so I'm still going in. I still got another cookie here. You know, actually, I think that would be my tip. If I have anyone here who is watching this live and has, has never tried reverse stamping, 
and is uh, thinking that I'm crazy. Um, hi, yeah, I'm Tiana. I'm part crazy, but um, I definitely recommend try a design that is like um, the designs that are on this plate. Um, M174 or find a plate that doesn't have as thin lines. I feel like that's probably a little bit more advanced and maybe practice on a few of those designs. The thicker the lines, the more forgiving perhaps uh, the design is. You know, when you have thinner lines, you really have to be a little bit more conscientious of um, the over coloring, the over polishing. But when the lines are thicker, uh, you don't have to be as nice about it, I guess, you know. And we didn't all learn how to color in the lines the very first time. So I think that would be kind of like a tip for any of you if you've wanted to try reverse stamping, but it's just like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to start. Okay, I actually, I kind of smudged the cookie. And I'll tell you exactly what made me think that I smudged it. Um, I felt a part of the brush getting a little dry and I touched the surface of it. And sure enough, I did actually kind of smudge part of it. So um, note to self, try to be as light handed as you can when doing uh, reverse stamping because you don't want to reconstitute the polish that it's sitting underneath, which is dry. Okay. Go ahead and color the other cookie. So a really light touch, try and, um, if you can, it's, it's a, like a floating technique or like a dotting like this. Try not to put too much polish. So that's what the design looks like so far. I think the list was red. And then I think one more part, I gotta do a leaf. This is trickier than I thought, especially because I'm going back and forth between um, technology and stuff like that, which keeps shutting down on me. <gasps> okay, so now I'm going in with a little bit of Russell and um, like this, going, coloring this leaf here. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more polish. Oh, I felt a little dizzy all of a sudden. Maybe the polish fumes are getting to my head. It's also what happens when you don't have lunch <laughs> before doing a live. That's gonna be the checklist, I think, moving forward. You guys will just have to ask. Hi T, welcome. Uh, thanks for starting the live. Did you eat lunch? Do you have your coffee? And just run through the gamut of how to start. Okay, another tip since we're talking about reverse stamping. I, even though I need red, I'm not gonna go back into this red that I have on my palette here. And that's because one, it's probably really dry. But when you're doing reverse stamping, you want to keep um, wet 
polish. You don't want your polish to dry or start getting tacky on you um, because that's not gonna work. You really take the risk of um, messing up your design. All this talk of ice cream, now I want ice cream. So much concentration that goes into reverse stamping, but I really, it is a task to have to like try to be entertaining and do this at the same time. But um, when I don't have to talk, this is actually, I kind of find it a little relaxing. What about you guys? I have a, a little bit of self-care. I'm happy I get to do this with you guys because um, on my nails, since I don't use regular polish, this kind of gives me an avenue to be a little creative. I still got that Taylor Swift song in my head. I don't think I'm gonna color all the way because I'm not gonna stamp all the way over there. I don't even think I have a nail that's big enough for that. Okay, so. I don't think it goes all the way to the list area. So this image is done. I think it might be smarter for me to just put it in, um, sorry, apply it to the nail all one time. So let's move on to the Christmas lights, which that looks pretty simple. Okay, let's see if I can clean this off. Mm. What kind of colors I need? Red, red, transland, and I need latte. Okay. So let's do serious, man. This is a lot more concentration than just kind of going off the cuff here. But so far, I like how it's turning out, though. I really like the colors in here. So glad you guys like me enough to stay <laughs> on a live like this. Yay. Okay. So now I'm going in with latte. Oh shoot. I wasn't thinking backwards. That color is supposed to be <laughs> represented here. Eek. That's okay. This will now be Tiana's representation of, but it's okay. We'll just run, run with it. Um, So let's see, 
that means that this one up here is supposed to be blue. And let's see. I'll make, oh gosh, this is getting real confusing. It's like, where did I pick this up? Okay. This is supposed to be blue too, okay. Welcome back to the regular scheduled programming while I figure out which color goes where. I don't know, give me a topic to talk about. Today is going to be kind of a, a long live. Dev, what do you want to talk about? So if you didn't know, Dev is on our live right now. She's watching and helping. Hi, Dev. Wish you were here to keep me company while I take on this uh, mon monumental task of reverse stamping this design. I mean, you guys won't be completely mad if I missed a few lights, right? Oh, gosh. Oh, I really like the colors, though, that are used here. Okay, I'm just... It's creative. Just do... what I want. You know, actually, I just got through watching this series. So I'm having a HGTV moment for all you HGTV lovers. Come huddle with me. Um, so I just finished this show called Saving the Manor. Oh my gosh. Have you guys ever seen that show? So this show is so fun. Um, I mean, for me personally, I've never seen um, a program like this where, well, I guess it, it is a restoring, but this couple, they're living in England and they bought a manor that was once owned by King Henry VII. And so it has like multiple areas, um, you know, they convert a few areas to make into living quarters. Like they have a servant's quarter and um, a hayloft. I don't even know what a hayloft is, like, but it was so cool because they had so many items in the manor. Um, oh, um, Monica, I don't have a uh, cable either. I haven't had cable in eons. Um, but I do have uh, Discovery Plus, and it's actually really cheap. So my husband got into the show too, and he's like, uh, can you keep it on? I want to make sure that we finish um, this se series, because I was about to turn it off. Little did I remember how much of a geek I am for Discovery. Anyway, um, so... There's so much in this manner that they've had to do, and they've basically done it with their own two hands. It's this couple that bought the manor, and one is an architect, the other one is like a fashion, has like a, I don't know if he was a fashion designer, but some something in fashion. And they just do such a tremendous job on this manor, it's beautiful. So if you haven't watched that show, it's super cool. The couple is super cute too. I 
think his name, um, their names are Dean and uh, Borgia. And his mom comes to help like um, do little odds and ends at the manor too. And um, it's just so cool. I think I would get freaked out. I don't like cockroaches. That is big no-no for me. So of course, you know, undertaking a restoration. Oh my gosh, I seeing a cockroach, I'd probably just die. I would end right there. And I guess the best part is too, for this place, you can actually rent to stay there at any of their, um, renovated um, lodgings. Super cute. Okay, so that's uh, image number two. Let's move on to image number three. And now, um, again, keeping along the same line of restorations, I am watching, um, what is it, the Magnolia Channel, but it's uh, Chip and Joanna. Um, it's like a f fix up or fix upper or whatever. And they're redoing this um, castle in Waco. And I'm waiting for that episode to come out so I can see how it comes out, turns out. I thought the season was over and I was wrong. <laughs> so now I have to wait until that episode. Fix Upper, yep, that's the one. Okay, so now I have to color these mittens. So I'm gonna go in with Skin Deep here and start coloring this. So watching all of these things, I'm like, I want a historic home now. I mean, I'm not under the impression, home renovations, I've done it once before. And um, I think the house was just in perpetual state of repair um, and maybe you know younger Tiana I just didn't like the home in general it wasn't mine I had come to inherit it when I met my boyfriend now husband he had purchased the house before me and um, oh my gosh we're still together we still decide to get married so I mean there, there's something in that but Oh my gosh, if you can make out of home renovation and still say you love each other, that is like next level, next level love right there. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> if you've ever done that with your partner, home renovation. Oh goodness. <laughs> Waco is insane, I've never lived See, oh, I w that was the first thing I said to him. I was like, castle? There's a castle? But what do I know? I've never been to Texas before. So, but it was like a, they, they call it a castle. It kind of looked like a really old historic building that could probably be converted into um, a, a museum. I mean, beautiful, like the brickwork and stuff on the outside, but it was really run down. Um, but aside from that, I can't really tell you anything else. I know nothing about Waco. I mean, uh, about this, the sadness that had happened. We don't have to go into that again. Tiana's crazy talking about true crime stuff, but So if you're coming in, I am painting mittens. That's what I'm doing right now, but we're just having a long story time because this is really a manicure with me segment. 
where I'm taking a design shown on our website and I'm recreating it for you guys, showing you how to make it so you can do it. Oh, another thing. See, this, this is just gonna be a conversation full of like Tiana's random thoughts. There is a antique tent show or something. Gosh, it starts with an M that uh, Joanna went to in the show. Oh, it looks so awesome. I didn't know I liked antique things, but just going to like, what is it? Like one of those on the go or on the road antique road show kind of things. Oh gosh. Could you imagine if you had a piece laying around your house or like grandma or grandpa just gave it to you you know just like oh because i love you or you know you found it in their home and it's worth millions of dollars or you have like a watch or a timepiece gosh i've seen so many of those on like the antique road shows where they'll just come up and be like hey yeah grandma gave me this or this was my grandpa's it's a Rolex he had, you know, when he was in the war. And it's like, oh, this is such a rare timepiece. It's, uh, you know, I've seen it go for $700,000. Life-changing. Let's see. Sorry, um, I saw a comment from B. Sorry, am I missing some questions that I need to address here? I'm just going on with my ramblings. But if you have any questions, right now I'm focusing on painting this. Maybe that's the reason why, but if you can just wait a moment, I can take a break and take a look. I'd love to help you guys. Just hard to uh, focus and paint and address questions. I just joined in. Uh, I... Oh, okay. Let's see. Here is my dirty brush. You can see that there's a little bit of polish on the end. Um, just using my detail brush and all I have is my um, acetone pump here Lazy Tiana way. This is what I do. I lightly squeeze it just so So you can kind of see it filling up with acetone and that's what I do Let me bring up a napkin so you can kind of see the acetone will just kind of pull in there and There That's how I clean the brush. I think we have a short one minute tutorial that actually talks about that because I know Dev had talked about it in a previous, um, a previous video, how to take care of your brushes. And yes, I'm using all Maniology stamping polishes. am I missing here? Okay, let me know if I'm missing anything. And again, um, I'm just looking down trying to <laughs> focus on this, but I'd like to answer your questions if I can. So just go ahead and tr keep writing them. I'll try to get to it. Okay, so far that's what the design looks like. And I got a few more pieces to go. Let's see. I mean, I can do some red in here. Okay. 
I think I see a question about copywriting. I think there was something about the Grinch. Um, you know, to be completely honest and stuff, again, if you're, if you're just joining us and um, not that I expect anybody to know a history about maniology, but for those who don't know, you know, we're, we are a small company um, based out of Hawaii. And um, yeah, so we try to stay away from copywritten imagery. Um, not to say that in the future, you know, of course, there are collaborators or, you know, big organizations or companies or that we would love to collaborate with. However, um, trying to get your foot in the door is hard. Um, you know, reaching out to these businesses. I mean, if any of you guys know the best way or work for any of these companies, please let us know. But, um, yeah, as a whole, we will stay away from copywritten um, or trademark designs just because the the legal ramifications of just doing that. We, we just don't want to get into all of that. Again, as a small company, that's huge. I guess liability would be the word. So, you know, big no-no. We just don't want to do it and get ourselves involved like that. So we do have like inspired. We have a lot of imagery that is inspired by, but that's about as uh, far as we go. So they might be kind of, I mean, we work with our own inside house, like team of designers for majority of our plates. And so, you know, we do have like an inspired by Nightmare Before Christmas or, um, We've done like Harry Potter-esque, but um, again, we try our hardest not to take any of the trademark designs. And I think we've been doing a really, really good job about that. I think this is gonna be so satisfying after you watch me do this and then transfer it onto the actual nail. So satisfying. Right now I'm using Skin Deep. Sorry guys if I'm not doing a good job by letting you guys know which color I'm using. Um, so I'm using Skin Deep to finish off the Santa's hat there. And I'm gonna do this little beanie over here. I think that should be it for this particular design. clean off the brush and I'm gonna go next color I'm gonna go back in with latte and finish off that beanie design so is it getting cold by any of you I'm over here wearing a jacket because I'm in an AC office but outside of this, it's very hot still. I mean, Hawaii doesn't really get cold, cold, um, especially where I work, but I live in the mountains, so it does can, can get chilly at night. Okay, so that wraps up that design and we're moving on, making pretty decent time. Well, maybe not time, just not taking as long as I expect. <laughs> Thank you guys for staying on and um, keeping me company here.
This is definitely the sign of somebody who has reverse stamped. This is what my sticky stamper looks like. Had our first snow in north central Kansas. Oh, nice. I should call my girlfriend, my best friend. She lives in um, Kansas City. I'm sure she's overjoyed. <laughs> Okay, let's go back in with Skin Deep. And that's gonna be the color of our snow, snowman here. You know snow, again, I've never lived in it. Um, however, I have seen it. I've dated somebody who lived in it in Chicago, so I used to visit there all the time. It's not for me as far as the long haul. Um, I, I don't wanna shovel it. I don't wanna start my car up like an hour before um, I leave the house. Yeah, it's, it is a different lifestyle, but I'm sure some people would say that they don't wanna come to Hawaii and sweat. That would also be me. I was born and raised here and um, yeah, heat is not my thing. And I miss seasons. So I guess that's the trade off. I love the cold though. If I could do cold without the snow, that would be perfect. Saw a comment, Vegas finally got below 70. <laughs> I remember when I lived in Vegas, it seemed like um, Halloween night always used to kind of get cool. Like there was just a chill in the air. Of course, with our environment kind of being what it is now, you know, things are changing, but I don't know about you guys, but this summer, um, in Hawaii for me and stuff, it wasn't as hot as it normally was. I mean, we had some hot days, but it wasn't like completely nuts. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Was it just me? Because normally, I mean, it's just excruciating. But um, September was, was pretty hot, but it was still manageable i felt like uncomfortable but manageable if i had ac in my house i would have ac on <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of latte onto our little snow buddy here. Color in the nose. Oh boy, come on. Oh, what's going on here? The bristles on my brush are getting a little fried, I think. Okay, let's see. You don't want it to get like that and then your lines don't get all crisp when you're painting. Okay. And that's what our snow buddy looks like. Okay. So now, if I remember, I think I'm gonna go in with the red because the little present on top of his head is red. Okay, so let's see. 
let's go in. See, you know, my the bristles are getting kind of split apart and I'm trying to kind of get them back together. So let me kind of, what I'm doing is I'm kind of just twisting it in the polish to kind of get it to a point because I don't want them all spreading apart like that. I've had these brushes for a while. I think it's just kind of the nature of brushes after a while for it to do that. I don't know if you guys can see, it's like forking out that way. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? Let's see, I have a question. Um, T, how long did you live in Vegas and why did you move back to Hawaii? Well, I am born and raised in Hawaii through and through. Um, I didn't come here because of military, which a lot of people seem to kind of stop over in Hawaii. Um, but I was born and raised here. And um, when I graduated from high school, back in the back in the days um <laughs> i went to unlv so that was my uh, university of choice and then ended up going to art school instead and that was what i graduated whoa okay give me a moment uh 2002 i graduated high school in 2002 so um yep i moved to vegas at the ripe age of 17 <laughs> <laughs> which I know for for any of you who you know it's a gambling town can't do anything legally that is <laughs> um yeah so my reason for actually coming back was because of family but um I think I'm comfortable to probably share the the after I got married, actually it was the the year before, so actually the year I got engaged, I'm sorry. But the year I got engaged, my mom uh, came down with, uh, we found out she had pancreatic cancer. And um, so that was, as you can imagine, pretty devastating. And um, so I was planning my wedding because I was planning to get married in Hawaii and stuff. And my mom had to undergo some pretty hardcore surgery. Okay, I'm going to switch out this this brush. It's still doing that fraying thing and that's making me frustrated. <laughs> so yeah, so, you know, after going back, you know, getting married and stuff like that, luckily my mom made it through everything and um, she had back-to-back -back surgeries only like literally six days apart and um, you know I went away she got better at least what I thought got better but um, I wanted to kind of stay close to my mom see how she was how she was doing so the year after I got married I decided to come home it was just time uh, I wanted to be able to kind of make all the memories I possibly could with my mom, just not knowing how long we would have her. We were blessed with her for 13 years. So I'm super, super thankful for all of that because that was very unlikely. If, um, if you're not aware of pancreatic cancer, it's very aggressive. Um, and particularly where she had her cancer, this one, it, it's, you know, from everyone who's talked to me and, you know, who I told the story to and stuff, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, your mom, she lasted so long. She, she definitely did. And I think it was kind of awkward for her at that particular time that she was diagnosed to see people who had pancreatic cancer who were famous who passed away. So like the likes of um, Steve Jobs and Patrick Swayze, 
um, that really kind of resonated with her, like why her? Because she was seeing other people who were diagnosed with it um, pa pass away. So, um, yeah, sorry. I'm kind of going all over on a tangent here, but um, that was the reason for me finally making my way back home. And uh, I brought home an import, <laughs> my husband, who was a more than willing participant to move back home with me. He's a, a California, California dude. So from the, I want to say Bakersfield, but he's not from Bakersfield. He's from McFarland. Um, you know, I don't know if, if any of you are from that particular area or are aware of the area, but that's where my husband is from. He comes from a very multi-generational um, farming family. So, yeah. But thank you so much, everyone, for, I see some uh, comments and stuff like that. So I really, truly appreciate. Um, and, you know, I'm not trying to make this a, a, a sad thing, but um, through the pandemic and stuff like that, uh, we actually, we as a family suffered a lot of loss, but my mom was one of them. She finally, um, the cancer finally was just, uh, tore up her body. And um, I lost her right at the beginning of 2021. So that really sucked, starting my year off that way. And I'm just thankful I had my son and she was able to spend some time with him. And thank you so much for listening, you guys. <laughs> I'm kind of going through something right now too, like um, I guess since we're having like a, a talk story kind of session where I'm trying to understand my grief um, in a way that is understandable to me, I guess, if that makes any sense. Sorry, I gotta fix an eyelash in my eye that's kind of irritating and making it very hard to see and paint at the same time. I came across this podcast. I mean, I, I had heard about it because I actually um, follow, I don't want to say a newscaster. He's more than that, a reporter, I guess. Anyway, um, maybe some of you guys might know who Anderson Cooper is. Well, anyway, um, he actually started up a podcast because he lost his mom. And it was kind of a way for him to navigate his grief and how he was feeling and, and also to, you know, I think a lot of times when you're in grief, you kind of find yourself feeling alone. Um, it's a really good podcast. I found it to be emotional at times, but um, just a really interesting podcast where, you know, he's interviewing some celebrities and some people I know, some people I don't, but you know, it is kind of a common thing in our lives that is going to bind us all together is that we all will go through um, the loss of somebody who is really important to us. And maybe it's not somebody. It could also be, you know, a, an animal. That was another thing, too. I lost my, my dog. She was um, ill, and that was very um, sad. That was also during the pandemic as well. And I think, you know, too, if, um, I don't know, it's just one of those things like some, it's like, oh, it's just a dog, but that was my family. My dog, Michaela, she was my family, so. My baby, actually. <laughs> she was a pain in the, I can't say the, the word, she was a pain in the ass, but uh, that was my baby. So I just went in with the, the um, 
cherry bomb to, I want to say poinsettia. Is it a poinsettia? I don't know. Okay, I am on the, I'm in the final stretch. Am I in the final stretch? It feels like I am. Oh. Hi. Sorry about that. I've been getting, I know I've said this before and it's nuts because it hasn't stopped. Um, been getting so many spam calls. It's crazy. So crazy. And I swear these spam calls, they have no idea what time they wake me up at. Yes, pets are family. They are definitely family. I miss my girls a lot. I had two. I was down to one. But, you know, we make those really hard decisions as uh, pet owners, you know, when we realize that they're not their best selves. And um, at least I can peacefully say that I was with both of my girls when they, they passed over. And um, that meant so much to me because I wanted them to know that I was with them no matter what, you know, all the way to their, their final moment. And that's just how much they meant to me, so. And this one I'm talking about, Michaela, I actually, both of them were Vegas dogs. <laughs> um, I had both of them in Vegas with me and they traveled back home with me. But this one I had found, or actually my husband, he had worked at the Bellagio at the time. If you're not aware of the Bellagio, it's just a fancy schmancy hotel in Vegas on the strip. And um, he wasn't even supposed to go to work that day, but he had a meeting and all of a sudden he gets off on the freeway. And this was at the height of, um, you know, the, there's a lot of foreclosures and stuff happening in Vegas. You know, the economy wasn't so hot and people were getting rid of their animals, which is really sad to say, but it's true. Um, and he found this puppy on the side. He pulled off on the freeway. We were living at Rainbow and 95 at the time and he pulled off on the side and saw this puppy that was running towards him. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't even bother to put up a sign or anything. He brought that dog home to me and she never left. I didn't even bother to find if she had a family. I was like, this dog is, my, <laughs> is mine. And um, we took care of her, loved her. And she was a little pest. And, um, but we loved her all the way till her final day. So, but that's always the really interesting um, story behind her was finding this dog on the freeway, off the freeway. And um, it was scary, you know? She could have just ran off into the road. And, you know, there was a big freeway that we lived by. I remember him calling me. I was still sleeping. You know, I was supposed to get ready for work that day. And he's like, I have a surprise for you. And I knew it. My hair was all like just, you know, bedhead. Not trying to look all cute and everything. And I come out and this dog all of a sudden just peeked its little puppy face over my husband's door in his truck. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was so excited. Okay, now it's time to transfer all of these designs. I think we're done. Okay, this eyelash is gonna be the death of me. It is so <laughs> bugging my eye. What's going on? 
This is what happens when you have false eyelashes. Sometimes they get a little crazy and they start twisting and then oh, they just don't sit on your eyelash nicely. Okay, so now let me just go ahead and close up all the polish. We made it, we've almost made it. Now I'm gonna go in with a sticky base coat and I'm gonna top, hmm. I think maybe I'll do like, should I chance it and do all five? Oh gosh, I think it'd be risking, but should I risk it for the biscuit? Maybe I should. Okay. Um, I had two pit mixes. I am a sucker for pities. And, um, yeah, they're just seriously the, the most lovable dogs. Can I, actually, I, this, there was this funny memory that just came to mind. So I was like a young, you know, just a young adult. And it was just me and my dog. I had lived in this uh, apartment. And this lady was, you know, she had this beautiful German Shepherd, kind of an older German Shepherd. But she was an older lady, and she was just grumpy. I don't want to talk smack, you know, but she, she just didn't look happy, okay? And every morning, we would kind of walk our dogs in and around the complex at about the same time. And, you know, of course, her dog would get excited. My dog was quasi puppy she would definitely get excited and of course you know because she's pulling it would look like I didn't have control of her but I did I definitely did and one day this lady came up to me and she was like your dog da -da 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 -da. You know, basically what she was trying to say was you know she was like my dog got bitten but from a dog like yours and you know kind of like keep your dog away from me and stuff like that and you know keep your dog away from my dog and I was so, I'm just going to, you know, this is the kind of dog parent I am. Just to kind of, oh, no. I need a moment of silence right now. <laughs> Do I laugh to keep from crying? Or do I just cry it out now? Or scream? <sighs> I think I was so caught up in talking that I just went ahead, went for the gusto, <laughs> put the design down, and I messed up. Mm-hmm. So we got four cent, not Santa, but uh, hmm. I'm not going to cry. It's just nail art, right? And nail art that you guys have all been sitting here patiently with me waiting to see. Okay, relax, T. Oh my gosh. Bear with me, please. I want to cry. I won't, though. I won't. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for the encouragement. You know, you know. Okay, this might be a little too dry, but let's see. So 
so uh, talking about the dogs. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for rearranging my my mindset because I'm was just so stuck on the boo boo that I didn't finish my story, which is I think kind of rather funny and important. But um, so anyway, this lady was just going off on me. Okay, this is like what. 19 year old Tiana, younger Tiana, you know, not highly evolved Tiana. And, you know, I, I understood where perhaps she was having a little trauma. You know, she didn't want her dog to be attacked and stuff like that. And, um, but, you know, she was like, my dog was attacked by a dog like yours. You know, I think bringing in that whole stereotype about, you know, pits and everything. And, I kind of laid into her a little and um, you know I just told her I said your dog did get attacked by my dog that wasn't my dog you know so like we're gonna have this is again I'm speaking from highly evolved Tiana but that wasn't I don't think there were explicitives said but I just told her that wasn't my dog you know like we're gonna have to coexist we're literal neighbors living right next door to each other we walk our dogs the same time and you know I think after that we just kind of made it a point to just not really you know kind of avoid each other but I just told her like that's not my dog so I mean I think as you know if any of you <laughs> or just dog owners or but you have pits specifically and you've experienced this like I've also experienced going to dog parks um, where I've had to defend my dog too and um, you know it, it doesn't feel good because you know it's like as soon as you walk in there you're being stereotyped because of the breed of your dog and that just if you can't tell it bugs it bugs me for sure <laughs> so um, yeah I've, I've definitely ha have gone to bat for for my dog a number of times so so right now I went in with the sticky base. I'm just waiting about 40 seconds. Um, so it gets tacky, not dried. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply the last two images. So yeah, that's, that's my doggy tails. But okay, I think we should be good, sniff test doesn't smell as uh, alcoholy. Okay. Gotta be careful all those little scraggly lines there. Okay. And the last one, okay. I believe it was like this. Uh oh looks like I have a stamper down like I push too hard and it's not even that's why <laughs> okay okay so let's now do a little comparison comparison <laughs> that now that we have this on so basically what I would recommend doing is after any stamping we go ahead and put our top coat on. Oh boy. So funny because, um, well not funny. Maybe you guys can relate, I don't know. I'm having a lot of self-loathing at the fact that this uh, design didn't really turn out as well as I expected, but case it off, it off. Let's see. You guys have some really cool stories. I wish I had a little bit more time to kind of just sit down and read. As, as a matter of fact, okay, let's wrap this up and I'll go through the comments and then we can kind of finish off any last thoughts. But I really do appreciate you guys like listening to me because um, 
one, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you know, she's just the person behind maniology kind of doing nail art and stuff. But, you know, I am a person too. And um, if anybody who actually knows me, I wouldn't do this if I didn't feel like I, I couldn't do it in my own way, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, I know that we're, I work for a company, but, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable <laughs> if I couldn't do it me, you know, in my way. So, I hope that makes sense. Okay. I'm so curious now how this turned out and what you guys think. Let's see, let me clean this up, let me clean this up. Let's bring back that image and let's take a look at it. And you guys can sh tell me what you guys think. Okay, here we are. What do you guys think? Do we do a good job? Oh my gosh. I ain't mad at it. I mean, even four cent. I could fix that if I wanted to. I definitely could fix that. Um, maybe I'll just add the A, actually. I'll go back through and just pick up the A. But I think this turned out pretty darn good. You know, just realizing how you had to place everything is so, um, it was so nerve wracking because again, this is the first time I've done, uh, you know, just kind of a paint by numbers with you guys. And okay, I'm trying to see which, better worse but I think in comparison this looks pretty decent darn that's not even clear how annoying doesn't want to see a blurry picture you guys want to see what it's clear but I think it, it looks pretty good camera technology you're bugging me right now I like it. I like it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, how many colors did I use? Six? Seven. Seven colors? Yeah. I know, I, I see, um, who is it, Jill, who was asking about the plaid. Um, it's in the works. It's in the works. Um, this is the very first time that we've done a, uh, I guess a segment or a, a, a nail art tutorial like this with you guys to kind of show you how the inspiration looks like on actual nails and how we achieve that. Wanted to kind of see what the response was. Uh, if you want to see more of these, let us know in the comments. And um, But the plaid, we were definitely wanted to showcase the plaid plate. So, We'll, we'll definitely hit that up. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this live. I enjoyed doing this with you. It was a lot of reverse stamp, uh, reverse coloring, but I think it turned out wonderful. So yeah, let us know if you, if you want me and Dev to continue doing this with you. We have a whole bunch of new art that we could definitely share with you guys. Um, let's see. I know I have a lot of comments here. Let me just kind of scroll through and see what I can. Okay, plaid. Definitely you guys want to see the plaid. Got you. So we, we will have something coming up. Um, let's see. Oh. I see that we have a lot of pity lovers and I'm so thankful that you guys are definitely my people. Um, yeah, 
I think, you know, if you've had one, you've probably been through all of the examples and probably the more that I could come, uh, come across, but you guys are definitely my people. I actually have both of my girls tattooed on my arm. Um, if you're new here or, and or didn't hear that story, that's how much I really love them and how much they've impacted my life. So, um, yeah, I'm again, going back to like a, a funny meme. It's like, you're either that person when you see a pity coming down the street, you either go across the street or you like want to run up to them. I swear every time I see a pity, I just want to squeeze them like Elmira. <laughs> Well, you guys definitely seem to like the, um, the man, ma blip. I'm so colored out right now. <laughs> you guys really seem to like the manicure. I'm so thankful for that. I know this was a very long one today, but, um, you guys stuck it out with me. I'm so happy I could do this for you guys. And so here, here is a holiday idea for any one of you and you know what's really awesome too if you wanted to you could probably just like do just a base color like if you don't want to do all that work which i understand you could just take like an accent nail and just do that but all of the colors are in the description the items that i use today and also like i said don't forget to enter into the giveaway you got a few more days if you haven't done so already, um, share it with your friends, your family, anybody, anyone who you think that would really enjoy getting creative and having some holiday nails. I think it would be a really cool, fun um, little stocking stuffer for somebody too, if you win one. And um, yeah, that's it. Make sure to subscribe, tell all your friends and family about us and about the, the giveaway. And I think that pretty much wraps up for today. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and write it in the comments. We'll be looking at uh, some point throughout the day or this week. And I hope you really enjoyed the live. Thank you so much. And um, if you want to see more of these, let us know in the comments. Plaid, we already know. And um, yeah, thank you so much for sticking it out with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. Have a wonderful rest, rest of the week. I need to stop talking because I'm starting to blah, 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 blah. Have a good one, everyone. Uh, stay kind and have a wonderful day. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye, Dev.